Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm a bit nervous because it's the first time I'm doing uh, the presentation so late in the evening. Uh, normally drinking beer, I have to wait for a moment. I don't want to do it before the presentation. Yeah, so my name is Maciej and I'm uh, working for Nordic Semiconductor. Uh, you probably know we have, uh, we have the office here in, uh, in Krakow, uh, developer guys. Uh, I'm a theoretical engineer, let's say, because I'm in the technical sales. So I graduated uh, electronic engineering, uh, but I'm doing like more uh, using the stuff which is being developed. Uh, and I want to show you a bit what we are doing regarding IoT uh, recently. So what we are doing uh, regarding, we call it cellular IoT. So generally connecting the Internet of Things. So that's what we like to call the, any small things, what you can have. Connect it to directly, almost directly to the Internet. Um, and there are some things you need to consider when you want to do it. So uh, we as a company, we historically be known for Bluetooth Low Energy, but for a few years we are doing also very low power communication to the cellular network, to the LTE, uh, which came as a new standards, which came a few years ago. This is NBLT and uh, CATM1 called LTEM. These are the standards for connectivity to the cellular network, to LTE network, where you are using low power techniques to make it's possible to have like this kind of small device or some wearable device connected to the internet and maybe walk for a few months, few years on the battery, which was not possible using this kind of uh, either old cellular technologies, the major ones, which are becoming end of life. So 3G from Orange was turned off, uh, turned off recently. 2G maybe will stay in Poland for a few next years, but in some countries it's already out. Uh, or you have more capable networks it's probably faster, but then you are not able to do so small device working few months on the battery. There are some other solutions like uh, probably, you know, LoRa, Zigfox, etc. Uh, but they, they have some drawbacks. These are the uh, using, they're using the unlicensed band, ISM band, which can cause some problems. You need a very small duty cycle. Then you have very small bandwidth, not so suitable for IP communication, for example. And, and then they also, uh, you need to also prepare your own infrastructure. So if you are doing some smart city stuff like uh, water metering, maybe it's easy, but if you want to have uh, tracking devices, for example, that's becoming more problematic. So that's why we focused on these technologies and we are trying to make it as low power as possible. And I will tell you today what we managed to achieve and uh, how we are trying to do it. So if you want to have small thingy, small thing, connect to the internet, to do Internet of Things, you'll be able to, to do it. So we selected these two, these two standards. They are generally uh, cellular standards, part of LTE, but this is already part of 5G standards. So if you're looking at the massive machine-to-machine -machine communication in 5G standard, the NBLT CATM1 is already there. So if you're using these solutions, you're already 5G. Uh, there are many, there are many um, advantages of using this uh, technology. Uh, and that's why we, we made we made the product. So this is the NRF9160 device. This is here. It's 10 by 16 by one millimeter. So it's very small. We call it system in package, but it's certified as a module. You can see a lot of certification marks for UK, Europe, Asia, Japan, you name it. And then if you want to connect to the internet, what you need to do is to connect the antenna for communication, antenna for GNSS, if you want to, you don't, you don't have to. SIM externally, which is now optional, you can have internal SIM, maybe a sensor if you like to measure something on a, or a button, maybe clicker, and then the battery. I think it's the most important part. So generally battery and, and the antenna are the most important parts and you can make the device running. Can be really small. Uh, we have very low average current. So this is, uh, this is using LTE terms, uh, but the lowest current we are running 2.7 microamps on the power saving mode constantly. So that's, that's kind of the lowest you can get. And then the average currents, if you want to communicate, goes even, uh, even low. So uh, what we did, uh, we integrated inside, we have the modem, which is uh, normally the LTE modem uh, running on these two standards. And then you have also application processor. So it's called processor, but it's microcontroller. So this is similar to what we have used uh, in the previous NRF52 family, NRF53. This is Cortex M33. Uh, we are using 
uh, we are using NRF Connect SDK, which is based on Zephyr real-time operating system. So uh, this is something what uh, guys from uh, AV system, for example, know very well. Uh, and uh, we have some resources uh, for application. So this is also uh, one of the first things you want to do in the low power uh, solution is that uh, you give you t you make it as close as possible. So we are on the same piece of silicon. You don't have to do any communication between externally. If you want, you can, but generally we put, put it all together. And we put all this stuff into one uh, SIP. We call it SIP, System and Package. So previously we had uh, SOC. So SLC is the uh, is the devices on one piece of silicon, but when we put them on the same package, it becomes system in package. Uh, forgot something to say? No. So we have the modem, which is also doing GNSS. Uh, in this part, GNSS is uh, maybe too uh, too big word. It's GPS plus Japanese system. So in uh, in practice, in our cases, it's uh, GPS, and we are we are working on the same. Uh, piece of hardware, so they switch the context. So either you have the communication or you have the position. But uh, in most cases, for the IoT devices, when you're doing the asset tracking, for example, you don't need uh, one millisecond uh, information where, you're sp where is the device located. You need the information from time to time. So where this device is being used? So target applications, most of all, uh, asset tracking. Uh, so uh, if you want to, to know where is your dock located, for example. So that's a very popular application I saw. Uh, that's a, let's say B2C application. And then uh, if you want to have uh, tracking of uh, pallets, containers, uh, trailers even, uh, all this stuff which is not, you don't have the um, access to the car battery, you don't have unlimited power, and you want to know where is this stuff located, uh, it's probably the, the nice thing to have this on the battery. Then you have smart city, so you name it, uh, applications which not n not always are low power, so street lighting is uh, for sure not very low power because you have unlimited uh, current from the um, from the energy plant, but then probably you, ha you can have some sensors, like we can see the parking sensors, uh, waste management sensors, when you don't have the plug uh, connected and then uh, you uh, would like to use some low battery operated device. And then you have predictive maintenance uh, from the industry 4.0. Uh, so this is where you are measuring uh, vibration of the machine, for example, and you know uh, if, it, if it's okay or probably you, you need to replace the machine. And we have smart metering. So it's uh, probably the, the, the very big business. Uh, so if you want to do the uh, Water or gas metering to, to, to measure the consumption of these uh, two of these two uh, elements. Uh, you you will have the battery operated uh, meter, and in this case, this is uh, one of the most challenging cases because then uh, the requirements from the market are that it's supposed to live like ten uh, up to sixteen years on the battery. So you have the primary cells, you don't have the rechargeable cells, you put in primary cells, and they want you to report uh, once or twice per day for 16 years on the same battery. So that's uh, that's kind of the uh, challenge we have. So these are kind of the uh, designs we did with the customers from all different um, all different applications. Uh, so you can have very small applications. So probably it's not running years on battery because the battery is small. Yeah, that's always that's always a challenge. But then it's uh, possible to do it. Then we have a nice solution. For example, the um, tracker for the birds. So that was also possible to do some very small, uh, very uh, lightweight tracker. Uh, just you are able to track smaller birds, yeah? Because previously probably you need like big hawk or stork um, to, to be monitored. Now you can have the GPS tracker uh, even on smaller birds. That's, that's really, uh, we are selling, we are selling for some companies uh, quite a lot of this. And then you have all these uh, different uh, commercial and less commercial uh, applications uh, which are becoming uh, possible. So, so that's kind of the internal things, the small things uh, world, which we, uh, which we see is uh, maybe not booming, but at least growing rapidly. So uh, back to, let's say, more technical stuff. Uh, what is the challenge here? So the challenge is LTE communication. So we have the infrastructure, we want to com com connect to the uh, tower, and then we have the, uh, we want to send the data. So if you look at the communication, uh, I was mentioning this power saving mode. So this is the mode we would like to reach as fast as possible because here we have 2.7 microamps. And this setup and this data upload is uh, taking few tens uh, milliamps. So you can have up to 200, uh, up to 400 in the worst temperature cases, uh, milliamps uh, peaks during the communication. And then the upload of the data, which is here, 
it just takes 3%, not even 3% if you have 64 bytes to upload. So generally, the connecting to the internet, most of this communication is taken by setting up the LTE event. So that's kind of the challenge you have to you have to look. And one of the one of the big things uh, with the network setup is that if you're using the the CDRX, so this is when the, your device is waiting for the network to check if there is any information which you, it wants uh, it's uh, reading back from the network. So this is inactivity timer, and this is this is possible for 60% of the uh, whole energy consumption. So the first first thing we do is that uh, if the network supports it, we can get rid of this, uh, read, uh, get rid of this inactivity timer uh, and just send data and go to sleep. So your device is not reachable anymore. It's in the power saving mode, for example. So you have your application needs to be written this way that if you want to communicate, you have to, uh, you have to find a way to, to communicate uh, uh, properly with, with this uh, power saving mode. Uh, so that's the fun one thing. And then with this uh, one move, we can, uh, if you remember about this move. So this was not possible in, um, let's say, standard LTE solution. You can get th this communication down by 60%. Then another, another thing to consider is how often you want to connect to the network. So uh, as I was showing you in the previous slide, the connection to the network is taking uh, the most of the time. So you want to have as, as, um, as ready as possible. So if we, we, we did some calculations, for example. So if you, if you are having less often connectivity, the average current goes down a lot. So you can have also, uh, you can have also, for example, send more data at the same time or less data, depending. So for example, if you uh, would like to reduce the overhead of the, of the sending, so then you can reduce by, yeah, uh, by four, um, 400 uh, microamps, the average current. Uh, if you are communicating by one minute, then you can go down uh, if you are communicating less often. So what is uh, generally the outcome of this slide? Uh, try to make as much uh, as uh, possible on the edge and communicate not so often with the, uh, with the cloud if you're using LTE connectivity. So the edge computation, uh, try to uh, send the, not the data, but the information to the cloud. Then uh, I mentioned this power saving, uh, power saving, uh, mode, so this is uh, this very low uh, power mode, uh, but in some cases it's uh, quite hard to get it in some networks because uh, LTE is also quite complicated because of the networks, the roamings, the different SIM cards, etc. Uh, so we are doing some uh, some trick uh, and we are uh, we are doing this PSM on roaming devices as a kind of uh, not not typical solution which you would use uh, in a, when you are not roaming, uh, but a solution uh, which is kind of pretending that you, that you are in the uh, home network. So up till now, if you wanted to do the device which is doing uh, roaming and you want to go from here to, I don't know, Paris or, or uh, somewhere else, uh, you would use probably turn off the modem. So you would have like uh, PMOS uh, or some relay and the modem will be just shut down. So that's one way to go. But as you saw, the waking up from the from the uh, PSM plus logging to network will take a lot of energy. So if you are disconnecting, you are just switching off the modem and then turning on again, it's uh, getting uh, quite significant amount of energy. So the wiser is to use the PSM current. And with this uh, PSM for roaming as well, we are enabling to use it uh, as often as possible. So general idea is to get this communication as um, not so often and then use PSM mode as soon as you can and as, lo as long as you can. Uh, another thing to remember for sure is to remember to turn off the UART and the modem trace uh, when you are uh, doing the measurements, evaluation or getting to the production. Uh, so we have quite advanced uh, solutions. If you want to see what's happening in the network, uh, you are able to see it on the, on the modem trace. We have some Wireshark solutions uh, which can help to dig in what is happening, so uh, how the data is uh, being sent, what are the commands, uh, how the network is responding. Uh, but then, of course, this uh, takes the energy. So generally, if you are, um, I hope I'll be able to show it, uh, but if you have the, turned on the uh, UART and uh, modern traces, uh, it consumes the energy. So, so generally, uh, try to remember to use it, uh, turn it off or use it uh, wisely. Then another thing uh, we have, uh, it's uh, pre-evaluation of connection. So this is the 
mechanisms which allows you to get information about the status of the network before you send the data. So uh, before you decide to connect and send the data, you can have some information, what are the uh, conditions uh, for you to send. Uh, what is the reason? If the conditions are really bad, and you, if you are on the uh, NB, NBIoT network, let's say, uh, then uh, the modem will start according to the specification. We'll start with the highest energy, we'll do the repetitions probably, and we can waste a lot of energy trying to connect and send the data, maybe unnecessarily, because if you're doing asset tracking device, this device probably can move a few meters away, and then the conditions uh, can be better. So before sending the data, uh, we, we have this uh, possibility to make this pre-evaluation uh, of the connection, if this is, uh, if this is uh, uh, going to be let's say good connectivity, low power, or worse connectivity and higher power. Yeah, so this is something I uh, borrowed from, uh, from the guys from AV system. Uh, so that's another thing to remember. Um, also, also important, also something what we saw when we started to work with these devices, uh, you need to have, you want to have the communication with the cloud. And then at the, at the end, uh, the cloud, usually what, what you see uh, with most popular um, clouds on the net, on the, on the, uh, out there on the market, uh, they want to use uh, MQTT. Uh, but this is uh, based on TCP uh, and do is, is doing quite a lot of overhead. So uh, this data you have to send uh, back and forth uh, comes with a lot of overhead for uh, handshake uh, with uh, some additional data you probably don't need for your simple sensor. So generally uh, getting really basic communication like UDP is the way to go. So sending some data through UDP, for example, and then to make it sensible and to use it uh, in a, let's say, even not proper way, but to make it usable for a, uh, for, from cloud side, you can use uh, lightweight machine to machine as an application layer on top. It's uh, w working on UDP on co-op. Uh, and then uh, as, uh, as was uh, shown on the previous, uh, previous presentation, you can have objects uh, and it's easy to, to manage. And then with this, you can save still a lot of data. Uh, this, is, this is showing the difference between MQTT and lightweight to machine uh, by transfer during uh, initial connection. Uh, the lowest energy you can get probably is even not using IP. So you, in some networks, you are, it's possible to use non-IP data delivery. delivery. Uh, some networks allow it, some not, uh, for NB NBIoT, for example. Uh, but this requires you to build your own server gateway and uh, manage this uh, data by your own. Some customers would do it, but it's not uh, very popular. So we can see this lightweight machine to machine as a kind of sweet spot and uh, more and more interest on the market because of the, mm, uh, the best, cloud inter uh, best cloud interface uh, for now. Uh, one thing, another thing pops up. Uh, then we have uh, encryption. We want the secure connection from uh, end to end. Uh, and then uh, there are some, uh, some ways to encrypt it. So for uh, USD TLS for, uh, for UDP. Uh, and uh, up to now, there was the problem with the LT devices that uh, when you connect again, you probably could have uh, been assigned the different IP address. And then uh, the, your device would need to do another handshake for DTLS, which would take time and uh, energy and data, etc. So the latest uh, solution is to use the uh, connection ID. Uh, uh, we support it already. Uh, so with this, you have this connection ID uh, and the cloud and device, they know they are tied together and you don't need to do the handshake again uh, if you use DTLS. Or maybe you can use pre-shared key encryption uh, exchange the key uh, before the uh, before the communication, and then use the uh, symmetric encryption. Then maybe get this uh, this data even lower. Uh, and then uh, what else? SIM SIM card, small device, but it also has its own uh, current consumption. It's uh, very low, uh, but comparing to what modem consumes, it can be showing up in the numbers. So uh, you, you can switch it off. So in PSM mode, we switch it off, but we have some, um, some modes when we don't, can't switch it off because it has to, has to be synchronized. So in this case, uh, one of the things we can do is get rid of the SIM card, uh, use the soft SIM. So this is something we introduced uh, recently. 
with one of the virtual network operators, uh, and then you can get even lower with the uh, energy consumption uh, with, uh, uh, without the physical SIM card. So this is one of the reasons. So energy consumption is one advantage, but we have uh, also uh, easier deployment, uh, easier to manage the warehouse, uh, generally easier to uh, get this uh, SIM from the, from the operator. So that's already available. If you want to try, it's possible with Onomondo. Then we had, uh, I mentioned uh, briefly regarding the location. So where we have GPS on board. Uh, so yes, we do, we, we have GPS. Uh, and the GPS is uh, quite precise, I would say. It's not like millimeter uh, accuracy, uh, but you have information, exact position, where are you located? And this is something you would use for your dog, for example. You want to know in the, in the probably in the park, uh, if this is with next to this tree or, or the other tree. But then uh, we have some solutions. We have assisted GPS, predictive GGNSS, when you download the through the network, you download the ephemerates and the, the almanac for a couple of, for one day or for two weeks. Uh, and then uh, you can get faster time to fix and uh, waste less energy. But anyway, uh, GPS and generally GNSS uh, is quite uh, power hungry. So if you use it, you have to use it wisely. Uh, and we saw some, um, not some, many customers in uh, several applications. Uh, we are switching right now even switching, so if we are not using GPS, switching to the uh, ba location based on sniffing. So what you are doing, you are checking what are the Wi-Fi networks around, you can check what are the cells uh, serving you around, and then you can check if what's your uh, location. So this is uh, this would be useful in the city. So for example, you have the trailer and you want, you know, it's trailer is going somewhere in the city. Uh, you, you will know location 50, 40 meters. And then this outside the city, you have the location. This can be like 200, 300 meters accuracy. This can be even up to one kilometers. But in some cases, if you have the highway, you probably know the, the truck is moving on, uh, on the highway. And this, uh, with this, this comes free of charge, so generally it's, it doesn't cost you the energy. This costs you less energy, and this costs you most uh, energy of GPS. So this is also, uh, when you architecture your application, uh, it's good to know uh, how, what accuracy you need, how often you want to get the position, uh, and uh, which technology can you use. So these are the examples from uh, Finland, from our office. Uh, this is a uh, cell-based location, this is Wi-Fi-based location, uh, and this line uh, is the reference signal from GNSS. F so for cell, lo cell location, it's, let's say, we know which part of city we are in. Uh, with the Wi-Fi location, uh, we are pretty close to where we are. So Wi-Fi location, um, if you use it in the city, we also provide the services to, to get it uh, to you. You can you can be quite uh, surprised how uh, accurate this can be. So I can show you, uh, I can show you, hopefully, uh, no, because the guys are trying all, all the time to try to make me in Portland, but I will show you later. Uh, and then the next thing, uh, that's what I already mentioned. This is edge computing for power saving. So sending the data, three milliseconds, 60 milliamps. So processing the data at the same time with three milliamps. So the processors, the microcontrollers are quite effective in processing regarding the uh, power consumption, better and better. So generally the radio uh, will take your data, the radio will take your energy, and maybe you can do some computation uh, on site. So that's uh, generally the the way to go, uh, try to make uh, as much of uh, as uh, processing uh, on site. So one of the examples is uh, what we are doing. Uh, if you have some simple machine learning, because uh, I wouldn't expect you to have something complicated in this small device, but you can do, it has accelerometer, for example, this thingy. You can do gesture recognition. It has some sensors. So you can do some sensors as well. Uh, keyword recognition. Uh, for example, you can have with sensors, uh, with uh, movement uh, recognition, you can have the information if something, someone is falling down to the floor. So we have some application for the elderly people. Uh, and then from machine learning, you can get the information if someone is falling or not. 
So you can, what you can do is uh, probably you can get this data sent to the cloud, do the machine uh, learning, uh, uh, machine learning uh, up there, uh, or you can do, you can run this, uh, you can run this model on edge. Uh, so what do you do? So generally the CPU at 64 megahertz, we consume 2.2 uh, milliamps. While PSM is 2.7 micrograms. So uh, if you are taking small time here to do the computation, uh, you would save a lot of energy. So the most important question right now is uh, how much time you need to do this, uh, to these computations. So uh, we are doing some uh, calculations. So LTE event uh, is this one. So it's taking, uh, uh, taking this energy uh, with this time for CPU. So if you are using, if you are sending, let's say, uh, two kilobytes up to the cloud, so it equals uh, 49 seconds of processor power. You would be doing almost one minute uh, calculation on processor. This is equals the sending uh, two kilobytes to the cloud. So generally, if you would think, okay, let's use this energy more wisely, uh, we can try to do some calculation uh, on site. Uh, how much time we, we can uh, spent on machine learning algorithm, for example. So uh, there are also some calculations from our for edge impulse, uh, what we are using as a, to train the machine learning models uh, running on our microcontrollers. So for example, for this continuous gesture recognition, the total processing, processing time is 17 milliseconds. So if you go here, you can see that the difference is huge. So uh, if you do this gesture recognition on the edge, and you send the information after the cloud, you will save a lot of uh, a lot of energy. If you do the keyword recognition, like hello Siri or whatever you want to call your thingy, uh, then it's taking uh, it's taking a bit longer. Uh, but still, comparing to comparing to this, uh, is uh, much less. So, if you are doing this uh, computation, so machine learning is one of the ways uh, which can help you do that. But machine learning is just a uh, let's say, maybe example which is uh, quite popular recently, uh, but then you can do it uh, generally computation on edge is uh, is uh, preferred way to go. So I will show you how does it work, hopefully. Uh, so this is the, the least energy we can uh, get almost probably. So this is running, sending the UDP data uh, to the cloud. So uh, UDP sending is here. And then uh, I mentioned we have this re release assistant indication, so we, we are not waiting network to, uh, to do anything else uh, with us. We are just releasing this and going to PSM mode. So these are the LTE events. Uh, every 30 seconds, we are sending 10 bytes to the cloud, as I remember, uh, through UDP. So that's, uh, that's uh, live view, and that's the, the energy. Average energy is 1.3 uh, uh, milliamp because we are sending quite often, every 30 seconds. You want to do it in the real uh, world. The event is taking around 40 uh, millicoulombs. Uh, it's also depending where we are located. We are probably, we don't have very good reception. If you would have a good reception, this would be 30 uh, uh, millicoulombs. Uh, and then the PSM current here in between is uh, 208, probably good conditions. It should be around 2.7 uh, microamps. So I'm using the power provider kit. So this is the real measurement from uh, from Rita, Rita, what we are doing uh, right now. So that's, uh, that, let's say, the one of the lowest uh, possible solutions you can get to to communicate uh, to the cloud. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is UDP. So if you are be doing uh, if you'll be doing uh, lightweight machine to machine, probably you, will, you would need some a bit more data, uh, but then still, still it will be much more um, effective than MQTT. Uh, all right, so I will show you also uh, two last things. As always, demo effect. So it's not working as perfect as I was doing this on trials, but it's I always blame the developers. Yeah, that's the easy. That's the easy thing to say, because I was, I was, I told you, I'm elect, electronic engineering. So for me, always hardware was kind of the 
the most important thing, and now software is everywhere. And uh, changing software on the cloud is very easy. So we click and we change it really, really uh, often. So this is uh, Wi-Fi location. Uh, sniffing the networks from um, from these guys. So this is uh, this was this board. It's disconnected right now, <laughs> showing you some historical data, uh, but it's sh showing you the location which I managed to get before the show uh, information where are we uh, where are we located. So the information was the location accuracy. Uh, if I click here, oh, it's not showing here, but it's around, around 40 meters. So you know which building and even which uh, part of the building you are in. So uh, Wi-Fi location seems to be, you know, how accurate can it be? Yeah, it can be quite uh, accurate. Uh, several location at the same time uh, would give you like the information about the serving tower and uh, we have a few hundreds uh, meters to uh, uh, of the accuracy. Uh, okay, and the, another guy I wanted to show is this thingy. Uh, as well, we don't have the we don't have the GPS here uh, because we are under the roof. So that's another that's another advantage of wi of Wi-Fi location that we are not. Uh, dependent if we see the satellites, if we see the sky or not. So this is the uh, this is the information from the uh, cell cell based location. So the this is showing that we are here. Yeah, we are in the uh, reality here. So it's showing the part of the town when uh, where we are located. And this uh, this is working. Uh, I'm have the, have the air pressure. We have the sensors here. We have the uh, we have we can have some uh, shot simple uh, user interface uh, to use this uh, device as a prototyping platform. Okay, I think that's uh, it uh, from my side. Uh, please, any questions welcome? Yes, please. Uh, we have these uh, calculations, so we can show this data. Uh, generally, the LTE, the NBOT in LTE uh, is designed like this. I will repeat the question. Yes, I'm supposed to repeat the question. Yeah, so the question was what is uh, really the difference between um, good and bad reception in this LTE solution? So, how much, uh, what is the difference in the energy? So, for NBOT, uh, if we go in the very bad conditions, we have something which is called repetitions. So you switch the modulation and you are repeating the sending of the data. So this is done automatically by the device and this is after it's uh, communicated with the network. And it can be like uh, four times higher, 32 times higher um, than the good reception. So normally what we see with the customers trying to avoid it. So if they have even better reception, they don't want these repetitions because when they start to happen, they will deplete the battery really fast. And then I was mentioning this pre-evaluation uh, for, con for connection. So in the real-time solution, for example, we're installing water meters, uh, which are in the basement or somewhere. If you have good or moderate connectivity, you will send the data once or twice per day. If you have really bad connectivity, then maybe you will think of uh, replacing the link uh, somehow or send the data every five days, let's say. To, to get the same uh, battery lifetime. Okay. Yes, please. So uh, I've got a similar question. Uh, so what's the difference in power consumption in, in terms of um, the cellular and Wi-Fi location? So cellular location, uh, it's free of charge generally, uh, almost. So uh, if you want to uh, connect to the network, uh, the single cell location, which is uh, showing you the station is being served, is uh, totally free of charge because you have to com communicate anyway. You have to do the tracking area update, so you know which uh, 
which base station is serving you. Uh, and multi-cell location is, we are using the few cells around, but it's also when it's, uh, when you're doing the network search, you are, um, the modem is uh, getting this information, what are the uh, stations around. So the only thing you need is send this data, so it's a uh, few bytes probably, sent to the cloud, and then based on this, uh, you are getting the information where is your, your location. So you are sending the information, which towers do you see? what is the signal you have from this, to this tower. So each tower has uh, its own uh, unique number, and then you have the signal. And then uh, there is a trilateration algorithm uh, getting this information, where are you located? You send this data to the cloud, and normally what you do, uh, we have this uh, on our NRF cloud, we have this um, solution. Uh, you don't send it back to your device because your device doesn't, doesn't need to know where it's located, um, uh, typically. So you just uh, have this REST uh, API to, uh, to your cloud uh, and use it in your system, yes? So it's just uh, uploading the data of the things you can see around. So for Wi-Fi, it's the same, uh, but Wi-Fi... Uh, Wi-Fi um, radio, it's uh, less uh, energetic, I would say. So it will consume less energy for the sniffing. So that's why the, uh, for Wi-Fi, the precision will be higher. And uh, uh, while the, you have to spend additional energy for this Wi-Fi sniffing. And uh, when you are connected to the cellular uh, tower, it's kind of free of charge because you connect anyway. Yes? You mean which handshake? Uh, the, let's say the, the device is uh, just connected to the, 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 the cell network. Uh, it starts to it start sending some data, and then it's for some reason cut off in the loop. Uh, how does the device uh, handle that? How much does it cost? And uh, yeah, how, how much does it cost? Uh, the, the yeah, so uh, the, the question is what is happening when the device it starts to send data and then it's cut uh, uh, in the meantime with, uh, with some interruption. Uh, so that depends on uh, what state you are in. Uh, but normally if you are logged into the network, like here, uh, I can show you probably with this power profiler, hopefully. Uh, when you are already logged into the network, if you, are, you are in the PSM mode, or even if you send the data, if you are interrupted, uh, that will not kick you out of the network. So you are doing the tracking array update every now and then. Uh, so we are informing the network we are still alive. So with this tracking array update, you have the, uh, the LT network is uh, giving you the, the channel, the information, uh, it knows you are existing, etc. So you know that it knows that you are in the network and you don't have to reattach to the network again. So even if you are interrupted, um, we can try to do it. Uh, even if you are interrupted, uh, then uh, this uh, will not affect the power consumption later. Usually you don't have to reattach, although there might be some things set up in the network, or there had, might be some, uh, some things uh, which affect your connectivity and then uh, maybe the reception change and you need to change the um, cell tower because the cell tower you are using uh, for some reason, the track stopped and is blocking the signal. The different cell tower will have some different setup and you will need to do the reattach. Uh, with NBLT, that's, that's more complicated probably with uh, CATM1. Yeah, so here it's doing some synchronization, uh, a bit, uh, bit, more, bit more synchronization after turning it on, uh, and now it's sending the data again. So this is doing some uh, additional repetition to send the data, but then the next stuff, uh, the next, um, next part should be, uh, should be okay. But it's not full attach. So full attach uh, would take much longer because this is, uh, we have uh, one minute here, so this is uh, a few seconds. Okay. So power saving mode, uh, which we are using here, it's uh, set up with the network and you are negotiating how much time you can go to sleep without updating your 
uh, activity. And it can be up to a few days, if I remember well. So this is the timer for, from, uh, for in PSM mode to from 10 minutes up to several days. Uh, probably more, but uh, I would need to double check. Uh, and then you can go and not send any data and the network will still know that you are there and uh, somehow can be waiting for you. And then uh, if you reattach, uh, you will get uh, this kind of uh, power consumption. Okay, so the device sending that uh, is planned to be in the network for the next few days. Yes, so the, the, this is called the timer. There is a number behind, which I don't remember from the top of my head. Uh, and you negotiate with the network. If the network allows you, you can do it for uh, quite long time. And then you have to do the tracking area update, meaning the update you are alive, you are existing every even every few days. All right. Thank you.